Chad Valentine. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk with you a little bit about our uh, program that we've designed for Miss Lily Bowman, uh, track and field athlete here at Jacksonville State University, 21-year-old uh, female, third year here. Uh, we're going to be participating this year with us in the uh, uh, long jump, triple jump, and pole vault. Uh, we have designed a 16-week off-season training plan, uh, broke up into four blocks. Uh, there will be four, uh, uh, four weeks per block, uh, and, and progression will go uh, uh, week to week, uh, and then every every other week some things change, and then uh, every four weeks, and then eight, six, uh, eight, twelve, and sixteen weeks. Uh, uh, weight room training will be uh, three times per week as well. Uh, normally Monday, Wednesday, Friday, unless something hinders that. Um, and then we'll also do uh, testing in the weight room and on the track on uh, on usually Monday, at least Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of the fourth week of, of each uh, each phase of the training. A little bit about phase one, uh, start off with uh, warm-ups, herd mobility, uh, sprints, plyometrics, uh, it will be introduced as well in this phase, um, multi-jump circuits um, in, sand, in the sand usually, also known as sand drills, uh, something we'll do, tuck jumps, uh, uh, mountain climbers, things such as that in, uh, in the sand, uh, a lot of times barefoot um, to really get, really get our legs and our calves going. Uh, heel workouts will be introduced in phase one as well. Uh, usually a short hills, uh, 10 times, uh, 10 to 12 times in the first phase. Uh, also cardio uh, will be implemented as, um, also. Um, second phase, um, much the same, uh, with a little bit of addition to some new things. Uh, we will have our herd mobility and warm up as, as normal, herd mobility being part of the warm up. Also, uh, our sprints will increase. Um, our sprints uh, that we've, we're doing in, uh, in phase one will increase distances uh, metrically. Uh, also, uh, the plyometric circuits will increase as well. So, if we were doing 40 meters, two times 40 meters in phase one, we'll likely be doing two times 60 meters in phase two. Um, maybe even add a few um, additional um, plyometric moves as well. Uh, med ball circuits is something else that's also introduced in phase two uh, for this particular athlete. Um, also, um, we'll in some cases replace, in some part of the time, replace the hill workouts with the stadium uh, stadium workouts. At this point, um, they're a little bit more specific. Um, more jumping, uh, more jumping involved, and a little bit more taxing on the legs, um, and more sp specific to what uh, Lily will be doing um, with long jump, triple jump, and pole vault. Um, cardio will, um, will remain in phase two, but um, will be a little bit uh, lengthier. Maybe a 12-minute run becomes a 15, 16-minute run uh, throughout the uh, uh, second phase. Also, we will introduce uh, event-specific work at this time. Um, this is very important. Uh, two days a week. Uh, things such as short approach runs um, for the pole vault shoot and maybe doing some sand drills um, to begin with and then work our way back from the sand um, up the runway and then and then eventually um, short approach run on the actual uh, uh, pole vault runway and, and working our way back from the mat and adding uh, adding distance to those as well. Um, also specific phase work, um, particularly like the triple jump, um, we'll be doing things such as uh, you know, using rings and uh, mini hurdles and, and maybe even um, cones to try to lengthen the first and second phases uh, of, the, of the triple jump. Also, um, you know, it, it, this, this will continue through phase three. Um, everything will be um, increased. Uh, the distances and the times, uh, as well as the reps and sets, will, will, add, will be added to in phase three and on into four. Um, you know, once we reach the fourth phase, uh, everything will pretty much become, um, get to its max peak. Uh, if you will, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be more like a, a, a sort of a top off before the before the winter break, and before we begin to taper off into a um, a little bit uh, lesser uh, strenuous less tr strenuous training phase uh, during the competition season. Um, a little bit of a breakdown of each section of the um, of the daily training. Uh, the warm up is usually going to consist of 800 meter jog uh, with sprint drills and dynamic flexibility. Um, and then herd mobility, static stretches is also implemented at this time. Uh, normally that's something that we don't imp implement mandatory, uh, but it's, uh, it is something that they can, um, if they need some extra stretch and if they've got some tightness in their thighs or something, they're, um, they're welcome to do those. And it usually is uh, done two, uh, two reps um, for a 15 second, 15 second hold. Uh, herd mobility is twice a week throughout the 16 weeks. Uh, we will do, uh, we'll be doing, um, doing those on Monday and uh, Wednesday. Uh, typically, uh, start off the first two phases for the 
for the eight, first eight weeks. In other words, we'll do two times 10 hurdles on Monday, two times six hurdles on Wednesday. Um, when we transition to phase three and phase four, we'll switch over to uh, two times 12 hurdles on Monday and two times um, eight hurdles on uh, Wednesday. Weight training is three days a week, uh, typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, as, long as, um, as long as nothing changes throughout the, throughout the season. Um, sets, reps, and uh, sets, reps, and weight is formulated uh, through actually, actually through a spreadsheet. Uh, and it's set up so that uh, Lily and any other athlete will be able to actually enter their weight, uh, their, hang, their power clean uh, one rep max, their bench one rep max, and squat one rep, rep max. And it will formulate uh, throughout the entire program what they need to uh, what they need to lift, um, and the reps and sets are already are already on there as well. So um, very easy. That will change every four weeks. Uh, they can re-enter their weight um, as they as they get stronger and quicker, and, and those things they can change those um, by re-entering their weight, re-entering their max their max reps, and that'll and that'll alter some of their weight training. Plyometric circuits um, typically just broken out into Circuit A, Circuit B. Uh, circuit A is a small set of drills, uh, mainly just, uh, uh, usually just a lengthened version of sprint drills. So um, things such as karaoke, A skips, B skips, uh, butt kicks, backwards run, uh, things that are not too taxing on the body. Um, that's those are Circuit A is usually done in the first phase, especially the first two weeks before the second phase is introduced. Uh, we will once once the second phase is introduced, it's usually um, primarily the one we'll use. Uh, specifically for Lily and the, and the jumpers because um, it is a, a large set of drills that includes more bounding. Um, there's a lot of uh, alternate bounding, single leg bounds, um, frog jumps, and uh, broad jump type stuff. Um, it's a lot more event specific. Um, the drills are much more intense and more taxing on, on our legs and, and um, hips and, and everything. So um, also um, medicine ball circuits uh, typically done with a 10 pound medicine ball can be heavier, can be lighter, um, just depends on the situation. Um, sometimes done um, uh, individually or, or with a partner, um, it just depends on, on what we've got going on that particular day. Uh, we will increase the sets and reps of those uh, throughout the 16 weeks of training. Uh, gymnastic circuits are done uh, primarily uh, for the pole vault. Um, it is more specific to the pole vault. Um, however, it is very, very core oriented, very ab oriented. Um, so as we do our ab workouts three days a week with weights, um, sometimes we may implement these with, with other individuals as well, but um, the pole vaulters in particular will be the ones participating in those. Um, to kind of to kind of bring it all together, um, the, one of the main, main things and probably the most important thing is, is uh, communication between the coach and the athlete. Um, it is very important throughout the 16-week program uh, leading up to the winter break that um, we're very in tune to what what the athletes are doing, um, and what, and they're in tune to what what we're doing on the track, so that they're not overdoing, um, they're not doing getting extra work in um, outside of what we're doing. It's designed to um, be unique to the individual, and it is strenuous on the body. So any added uh, any added activity that they do um, in, outside of practice could be um, detrimental to their training and also their um, their health because um, it is it is taxing on the body from one day to the next. Uh, we have them from, from for an hour and a half to two hours each day. Um, so, um, you know, what they do outside of practice is very important as far as staying hydrated, get plenty of rest and those sort of things. Um, so if there's anything ailing them, um, it is very important that they, they come to us and let us know so that we can strategically change things as we need to um, so that we don't um, overtrain or, or tax the body when, when it's unnecessary. So, um, so the communication is very, very, very important. Uh, and helping um, helping us get this program um, to to allow the athlete to reach their um, their full potential. Um, I'd like to thank you for uh, for listening to my uh, my project here. Um, I appreciate it, and uh, thank you very much.